The HEN project came about as a result of a funding opportunity by Education Scotland. When we realised that there was funding available, we sat down as a kind of smaller group within the staff to look at ideas of how we could develop food education with children and also to take that more innovative approach with the aim of engaging more learners. Well, just to set our work in some sort of context, St Eunan's Primary is situated in Clydebank, which is an area of deprivation. And if we look at the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation, um, we see that 60% of our children actually live in the bottom, the lowest two deciles. And I do mention this purely to set our work in context. We never use it as an excuse. It's, it's there. So every morning we come out and collect eggs from the egg box, and usually we get one or two eggs uh, per day. And this one is laid by GR because it's brown. And then this was laid by Betty because it's smaller and lighter. And then this one was probably laid by Bonnie because it's bigger and lighter. I think this project ties in really, really closely with learning for sustainability and the agenda. I think it meets many of the different aspects. For example, maybe first off, the fact that we're at a rights-respecting school and that the children know, they're very aware of all the different articles. For example, Article 24, that children have the right to nutritious and healthy food. They're able to make those links with that this is a food education topic. They know why we're studying this, why we're learning about it. And they're also, there's also depth there in their learning because they're not only learning themselves, but they're able to share that with others, whether it's visitors in the school, whether it's their parents when they come in for a parent workshop, or whether, whether it's with younger learners that come in from the nursery and from the infants. We love coming out to feed the hens. Each day we make sure they have the essentials like mixed corn, layer pellets and oyster shells. When we went to embark on the hen project, it was a steep learning curve. You know, every day was we were learning something new. And what we did was we looked for support from other people who'd kept hens. So working closely with the farm and using them as a kind of sounding board and as a support. Um, and we also used a lady from the local community centre who was able to come up at the early stages and keep us right in terms of establishing the project and things that we should be doing on a daily basis to ensure that we're looking after them and doing a good job. So she was able to show us, you know, how to be weighing the hens at the beginning to make sure they, were, they had a healthy weight gain, keeping us right with what we should be feeding and what we shouldn't be. Um, and just really the maintenance of the coop. And she was a big part in terms of training the kids, of doing their, their jobs on a daily basis. Different, we usually get to about two to about six maybe to get sent out to do jobs. Well, it depends on what's needed. Some get certain things like sweeping, some get certain things like filling up the water and the food and then the toilet chairs as well, some have to clean up a bit and some feed the hens, like that. This project has had a really positive impact on all learners in the class, it's certainly engaged all learners and it's motivated them and it's been really rewarding for me, you know, to teach. We loved being peer educators to the younger children in primary one and the nursery. We have taught them about the egg recipes, the benefits of eggs and the life cycle about an egg. Some children have um, developed skills within their literacy, their numeracy and obviously within health and wellbeing. For children maybe with particular needs regarding behaviour, it's been a great motivation for them to go out and access the curriculum but beyond the classroom and having opportunities for outdoor learning which this topic really does provide. We did a poem to encourage people to eat more eggs and it's called An, an Ode to an egg. egg. Eggs are fluffy, eggs are neat, eggs are healthy, what a treat. A boiled egg is truly fine, I could eat them all the time. Tomato sauce but just a dash, tasty scrambled in a flash. Give the shell a solid wax, soon you'll have a healthy snack. High in protein, low in fat, eggs are really where it's at. Eggs are cooking on the stove, a culinary treasure trove. Eggs are great for you and me, and I always have them for my tea. In terms of looking at the whole IDL approach, I suppose our main aim is to, to look at it with a creative eye and to think differently. We try to, to make it more interesting and um, more exciting for children. And I think you probably would imagine that having a hen project with live hens on the premises, that's one way of certainly getting children's attention. The other thing I think this project um, 
develops and encourages is the development of lifelong learning skills and working really closely with our business partners down at Ardardon. Um, the children have had the opportunity to go down there and, and exploring the role of the farmer and to be doing jobs down there. Um, that's allowed them, you know, a good experience of the world of work and an insight into maybe jobs that otherwise they wouldn't have considered. Uh, I worked with the hens last year when I was in primary uh, six and it really made me consider wanting to be a vet when I grow up. And I love working with animals that you don't usually see on a daily basis, like cats and dogs and things. Um, so it really made me consider what I want to be when I'm older. So like being a vet or working in an animal shelter. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do a health check, which we learned um, last year from our business partners um, in the farm. So we have to check their eyes to make sure they're not runny or watery, because that means they might have an eye infection. And we need to uh, check their wattles and their chromes to make sure um, that they're not getting too dry when it's cold. And we also need to check their wingspan to make sure the wings are growing right and that they're not sore or if they try to flap away when you're doing it because that can mean there's something wrong with their wings. And we also need to check their skin to make sure they've not got mites. And if they have got mites, we have things that we put in their wood chips to stop them coming again. Um, and we also learned how to... Uh, flip them but they don't really like that but you flip them to check their breastbone to make sure um, they've not got a blocked egg because that can be quite dangerous and quite painful for the hen um, and we also have to check their beak to make sure it's not getting wear down because when they're uh, eating off the ground with the mealworms and things it can wear it down and it can, get, uh, it can be quite sore and we also need to check their nose to make sure that's not runny I suppose if you look at our journey in terms of sustainability, um, learning for sustainability, that has taken us to get to this point is probably five years. So I think for people starting out, if they have a time scale on it, it's not something that has to be completed in three terms or four terms. It's something that you have a longer term plan for. And that, I think, takes the fear out of it because you can then do it in small steps.